Hey friends, Ash here with Gent Sense, and today I'm back with another fragrance review. Today I'm taking a look at the newest Amen Flanker, Amen Ultimate. I was actually on vacation for the past week or so. Uh, you guys didn't know that because I still had videos shot that were coming out while I was on vacation. So it looks like I'm doing this review not that long after doing a first impression on it, but it's actually not the case. It just looks like that because of the magic of the internet and YouTube. Magic. So yeah, I've been giving this a decent amount of wear and now it's review time. So I'm gonna break down Amen Ultimate, let you guys know what I think about it, show you guys the presentation, let you know whether this is something you should check out or not. And interestingly enough, I know before I even make this video live, not too many people care about Amen Ultimate because I've noticed that basically around the time frame of the release of Alien Man, nobody's really seemed to care about Mugler releases. So if you do a review on a Mugler fragrance, it's usually met with one collective sigh from the fragrance community. Everybody looks at it and just goes, eh. So this video is for you, all you people out there in the fragrance community to meet with complete and total indifference. So with that out of the way, let's jump into this. Let's start this off with a quick look at the presentation. Here you've got the front of the box, you have the name of the fragrance, the house, the size and concentration down here at the bottom. There's nothing doing on the top of the box or the sides. On the back of the box you have your ingredient information down here at the bottom. And then on the bottom of the box you have your batch code and barcode. Also inside of this box, like all Mugler fragrances, there's a little invitation to join their circle of excellence, their star club, whatever. You can actually see mine on the inside of the box. I haven't opened this up the correct way. I didn't cut this sticker, I just opened it from the bottom. But on the inside there, you can see what I'm talking about. There's your invitation. Now let's take a quick look at that bottle. If you're aware of the Mugler Amen line at all, then you already know about this bottle. So you have the glass star right here with the rubber covering over top. Your atomizer is right here. That is where you press down on the atomizer. We'll talk about that more in just a second. And then here is a quick look at the bottom of the bottle. So these Amen bottles, they actually feel decent in the hand. The rubberized grip feels nice and it's got this little curve to the bottle. But the atomizers on these, as we all know, are trash. These atomizers are hard to press down. They don't really give a good burst of fragrance when you press them down. They are some of the absolute worst atomizers in the game, period. They suck. I'll go ahead and waste a couple sprays for you. You have to really, really give it your all when you spray this. One thing you can do to make these spray a little bit better is you can actually cut around the uh, the rubber here, basically in the indentation where that atomizer is, you can cut that and then when you press down, it's much easier to spray. A lot of people will do that. They'll go ahead and make that cut all the way around. Other people will take the entire thing off. They'll just cut it here and remove this whole thing like a, a minor surgery and just take that out. And there's actually a little plastic button right there that you can press down to spray. And then some people hate that and refuse to do any cutting of their bottle. But if you were unaware, now you are aware that you can cut that right there and then spray your bottles much easier. As far as the way this one looks, it is attractive. It looks nice. It's got a good blue coloration. The blue star kind of harkens back to the original Amen. It's a good looking bottle, despite the terrible atomizer. Now when this fragrance was first announced, some people thought this was going to be Mugler's take on a blue fragrance, and it's not really hard to see why. I mean, you've got a blue box, blue bottle, blue star. There's a lot of blue going on here, but this really has nothing to do with the modern blue releases that we've had come out recently. So this has nothing to do with your Dior Sauvages, your Bleu de Chanel's, your Dylan Blues, your Yves Saint Laurent Wise. This is a blue fragrance in terms of the bottle, but not in terms of what you would generally associate 
a blue fragrance with being, which is typically an overload of amberwood or ambroxan, along with some grapefruit, maybe some ginger and a touch of incense. And maybe a little lavender, just for good measure. This one has officially four notes, which is broken up into two accords. So you have balsam fir and bergamot on one side of the equation, and then you have mocha chino and cedar on the other side. This one opens up with a slight bergamot, a green bergamot, but it doesn't really come across like citrus. It doesn't smell like bergamot smells. It's more like a fresh sweetness is what you pick up from the bergamot note here initially. There's also a green, slightly coniferous balsam fir that mixes in with the bergamot, but it also does not really smell like a real fir tree. And there's no feeling of the evergreen needles or the resins from the wood or anything like that. It's a completely sweetened up synthetic take on bergamot and balsam fir initially. To an extent, it's almost like comparing an evergreen tree to one of those fake Christmas trees. You know, it, it looks the part, but then when you smell it, you're like, oh, this is plastic. I'm not saying this smells like plastic. What I am saying is when you smell this fragrance, you're not gonna be confused into thinking, oh wow, that's a hyper-realistic balsam fir note. It's trying to come across as a, a very modern, sweet, fresh take on a, a woodsy scent initially. And it smells nice. I know that it probably sounds like I'm hating on it and I'm saying, oh, you know, synthetic this, plastic tree that, but it smells good. Is it anything super new, mind blowing? No, it's not, but it doesn't smell bad. I've heard some people compare it to Invictus initially, but to me, it does not come across like Invictus. Invictus has that bubblegummy sweetness, and I don't pick that up here at all. As it starts to dry down, that's when the mochaccino comes out and becomes more prominent. Right off the top, you don't pick it up as much, but after a few minutes, once this starts to settle on your skin, you'll pick up more and more of that mochaccino note as this works through the mid. Now, the mochaccino note here does not come across like a roasted coffee bean or like a coffee bean note in general, and that's kind of harkening back to the opening because of the sweetness here. The mochaccino is a pretty good way to describe it, actually, uh, a mochaccino note. You know, a very sweet, creamy, not really syrupy, but kind of more in that vein of sweetness with coffee. So to me, it comes across like a sweet, almost Tonka kind of coffee vibe. Like if you took a, a good amount of Tonka and mixed that in with a, an already sweet coffee note, put that together, that's kind of how the mochaccino comes across to me. That mochaccino note sits over top of cedar and balsam fir in that order. You pick up much more cedar than you do balsam fir. The cedar still does not come across like a, a real cedar log or anything like that. But honestly, I don't think that's what they would want for this kind of fragrance anyway, because again, they're going for more of a modern, sweet, semi-fresh, woodsy type scent here. And the woods here actually come across pretty nice. The way that they're used, kind of interacts with that mochaccino note and plays off of it. Gives kind of a contrast to the mochaccino through the mid, so it works out. In the far dry down, this fragrance becomes centered more on the woods than it does the mochaccino. Once you hit that far dry down, few hours in, the mochaccino kind of fades away and it becomes a semi-sweet, woody fragrance centered more on the cedar. In the air, Amen Ultimate smells much better than up close. It doesn't smell bad up close, it's just in the air. It smells really nice, especially in the first hour to hour and a half or so where you can pick it up yourself. It smells really good. Uh, the mochaccino comes through. Again, it is sweet, but it's very pleasant. It's enjoyable and it's easy to pull off. The fragrance itself is not super complex. It's not super complicated, but I really don't think that's what Mugler was going for here. This is the type of fragrance that's gonna get a little bit of hate from some people in the fragrance community that are gonna be let down by this because again, it's not mind blowing. It's not anything super new and unique. And with this line, there are some fragrances that would be considered modern masterpieces at this point. The original Amen, a lot of people would consider that. Pure Malt and Pure Havan are extremely popular to this day. Ultra Zest, even though it's been discontinued, still has a good cult following people willing to pay a lot of money to pick up bottles of that. And so anytime there's a new release in this line, 
there's gonna be anticipation. People are going to be thinking, oh, what's gonna be next? You know, what's the new note that they're going to use, that they're going to build around? And then this one came out and they kind of went a different direction. And for that reason, it's gonna turn some people away, people who were disappointed when this was announced. They were just like, oh God, it's another blue fragrance, you know, looking at the bottle and they just immediately wrote it off. And then other people who are not really interested by that simple breakdown of just mochaccino, cedar, fir, bergamot. Nothing there necessarily grabs you, you know, grabs your attention. Mochaccino slash coffee slash cappuccino, that is a note that has come into vogue here recently, past couple of years. We've seen a whole bunch of mince designer releases that have had some form of coffee used. And so nothing here is super unique and I think that turned a lot of people away. Anyway, getting back to what I was talking about before, in the air, this comes across much nicer. The mochaccino comes across more clearly. Uh, the sweetness comes across in a, a very pleasant way. If you smell it right up close, it becomes more of a, like I said before, a semi-sweet woody scent. The mochaccino kind of gets dulled when you're right up close smelling the fragrance. Doesn't smell bad right up close, just again, better in the air. In terms of performance, this one is actually a little bit of a letdown for me. It lasts for about four to six hours off my skin. While that's not really weak, it's also not very powerful. And a number of fragrances in this line have great performance. And with this being named Amen Ultimate, I was expecting 10 plus hours of, of longevity. And it just, doesn't have that in it. It's in the four to six hour range, like I said, so right about average. And in terms of projection, it's good for the first hour to hour and a half off my skin. After that, it sits a lot closer. And when you're a few hours in, it is very close to your skin. So while that combined, the projection and the longevity is not terrible, it's not what I would consider weak, it's also not at all above average and not really in line with what you would expect from the Amen line in general. Especially again with the name Ultimate. It's kind of like those times that a fragrance brand will release a flanker and call it Intense or Extreme or something like that and then it ends up being weaker than the original and you just kind of have to scratch your head. Season wise, this is one that I think you could pull off year round, though it does seem better suited for spring and fall. In terms of when you would wear it, I think day or night, and it comes across more as a casual fragrance for me than it does a formal fragrance, though I do think you could pull that off on a date just because of the the way it comes across the sweetness that it has when it's projecting and when it's in the air it's an alluring kind of fragrance it's a fragrance that my wife for example really really likes for me amen ultimate is more of a, a like than it is a love i don't think it's terrible i think there are some things that are nice about it and other parts that are kind of a letdown so for me the performance is a letdown the way the mochaccino comes across, that's a positive. Uh, the sweetness that it has is a positive because it's not too overwhelming, not in your face. The fact that it doesn't rely heavily on ambroxan or amberwood is a positive. That sets it apart a little bit compared to uh, a number of the fragrances that have been coming out here lately. But at the same time, it's not really what I was hoping for, I guess from a new fragrance in the Amen line. I was hoping for something out of the ordinary, you know, something that was going to be much different than everything else out there. I think that this is pleasant, it's nice to smell, it's enjoyable, but I feel like when you put this up against some of the heavy hitters in the Amen line, this is probably going to end up being viewed down the road more like Crypto Mint was than the way Pure Malt or Pure Havan are. And by that, I mean it's probably not gonna be talked about very much a year from now. This is not gonna be, in my opinion anyway, one of the Mugler fragrances that five, six, seven years from now, people are going, oh man, I love Amen Ultimate. I wear that every year. To me, this is the kind of fragrance that the majority of people, when they smell it, they'll think, that smells nice. 
but the majority of people also probably won't be blown away by it. So I imagine it's gonna be a fragrance that a lot of people like, but not a lot of people love. And that's kind of where it falls for me. As of right now, this is not readily available at discounters. If you want to pick this up, I do suggest waiting until it hits discounters. It's not extremely expensive at full retail. It's 90 bucks for a 100 ml size bottle. So it's not on the level of like your Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum or Parfum. But at the same time, at 90 bucks, I think you can get a lot better stuff. So wait until that hits discounters, maybe pick it up $45, 50 bucks. I imagine it's gonna be somewhere around there once the, uh, the newness kind of fades away from this one. That's where I would personally target picking this one up. All right guys, that's gonna do it for me for Mugler Amen Ultimate. Not bad, not amazing, pleasant, but not mind-blowing. If you've smelled that fragrance, let me know below in the comments what you think about it. As always, thanks so much for watching, and thanks for all the support. I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.